like a hooker trying to make her way up the ladder. We are back, baby. Box Talk 2.0. Your host, Tina here, and today we got something a little bit different. I'm talking to a lady. Ooh, got to talk to one and actually be one for a while. Well, Alexis from Straight Line Stitch is not your typical lady. Not only is she of the ethnic persuasion, but she happens to front a metal band. What a novelty, right? Let's hear what Alexis has to say. Tell us a little bit about how you got into the band and how your musical past was. Um, well, I've been singing since I was a kid. I, I just knew, which is weird. I've always been like a shy kid. Like, I never, like I've always stayed close to my mom. Like I'm not leaving my mom, but I'm gonna be a singer. I've always had this dream to sing. Um, my brother was the one that actually got me into like metal and stuff like that. I wanted to be an RB singer. Really? Yes, I wanted to be an RB singer so bad. But like, um, I had like a girl group and I couldn't write songs. I was like, I can't write love songs. I've never been in love, I don't know. Like, so I just- Drawn from blanks, right? Yeah, I was like so frustrated. And then my brother like introduced me to like Corn and Ozzy and White Zombie and all those bands. And I just sort of fell in love with the genre. You know, I, that's what I was feeling. You know, like what they were writing about, I felt that. And I was like, I want to do that. It's something different. And know? there's a rhythm in it too. It yeah. has like it, it doesn't have to be so perfect. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's raw emotion. I'm like, that's what I want to do. So I started pursuing that and I got in a band in uh, my, my hometown, Clarksville. And after that, uh, we started doing some shows and that's how we met Straight Line Stitch. And we became really good friends and I was just like, oh, I love this band. They're doing more than my band. And it uh, just so happens that their drummer filled in for my band. My drummer, he quit and stuff like that. And we talked about our bands and my band was falling apart and their singers were going this way. And he was like, you want to try out? And I was like, are you shitting me? Yeah, I want to try out. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I want to try out. So I actually left my mom. I left home and I said, I'm going to I'm gonna go for this. So even if I fall on my face, at least I know I went out there and I tried. So I went out and I never looked back. That's amazing. <laughs> so tell us how the process has been of just, I don't know, integrating yourself as a woman into a kind of really heavily male dominated world. Well, you know what? I think that's what's helped me. Like, you know, I, is the fact that I, I didn't think that way. I didn't think that, oh, I'm a woman and I'm, you know, this is going to be a little bit easier for me or it's gonna be harder. I never thought that way. I just thought I'm going to pursue this goal. I'm going to go for it. And I'm not thinking about my color. I'm not thinking about my sex. I'm just thinking about I want to make music. I want to put it out for the world that's what I want to do so you know I don't I never even just being on like a tour like this I'm the only female you know I don't think of like oh I which can check hot, myself hot, like yeah. it is hot but you know I don't check myself like I'm a girl today before I go on stage you know I just like let's get it in that's about it that's what I think about let's do the best we can do go up on stage and rock out you know not every woman is born a natural beauty some women or a silent kind of beauty. And it takes a lot of makeup and aesthetic tricks, I call them parlor tricks, to get a woman together. Well, not Alexis Brown. She comes from a scene where, you know, she didn't necessarily have to wear makeup all her life. And that isn't always the case with women. We have a lot of pressure to look good all the time, to act like a woman all the time. Well, let me let you in on a little secret. Most of us are assholes, lovable assholes. Let's jump into Alexis's beauty regimen and how she approaches being a woman in this business. Um, well, I, I never really do anything that I'm supposed to do, you know, I used to do like the whole la la la, me, 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 and I was just like, eh, I don't feel like doing it, you know, so I was just like, eh. So the best thing that really helps me is I try to sleep as much as possible because that helps my throat out a whole lot. It keeps so, your body. Yeah, it keeps me just really like, okay, if I get a good sleep, I know I'm on for the next day. So um, basically it's just, um, I get up, I have, probably have like a cup of coffee or something and, um, you know, I chat with the guys and stuff like that. I don't really have like a routine that I do. I really, you know. You free ball it. I free ball it, yeah. Besides, I pray. I'm just like, oh, okay, give me do this show. And I promise I'll be good the next day. <laughs> I'll do something. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your beauty regimen. Ah, my beauty regimen. Uh, it's been insane lately. Uh, I get up and scrub my face. I like use a vino and all that stuff and Neutrogena. And uh, basically, I'll just I put on my face. I put on my foundation and I used to not wear makeup. Oh yeah? I didn't know how to do my own makeup. I had no idea how to do it. I did not know. It was like, it would consist of like foundation and eyeliner and <laughs> lip gloss. And I said, and I was just like, and then Basics. our management, she's just like, that's not going to get it. <laughs> His wife, she's like, that's not going to get it. You need Gotta to be do sexy. a little bit more. Yeah, so she taught me like how to put on my face and I do that every morning now. So, 
do you feel there's a pressure as I guess as a woman for sure in the entertainment industry to maintain your weight to maintain your appearance at all times there's definitely a, a pressure but I just I don't even think about that stuff I'm like eh, mm, you know I'm just gonna be me and be comfortable and stuff like that and, and I so I'm not trying to be like going on a, I Who don't care, but, I, <laughs> but I'm gonna eat I, I don't care I don't care if I can't wait that's what it is hopefully I'll be with somebody that appreciates it <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> Could you see yourself eventually settling down and having kids and like just trading this lifestyle in for a different lifestyle? Yes, yes. How far on the horizon is that? I don't know. Way far, way far. Because I want to be able to, um, you know, really, really make a successful career. You know, I want to be able to not have to, even if I, you know, I got married long down the line, I want to be able to still, you know, have my independence, independence in case that doesn't work out. You know, I want to be able to take care of myself. So, like, you know, just have some stability. I never really had that growing up, you know, so I'm really fighting for that now. When you work on an album, when you're working on lyrical content, how do you approach what you're gonna write about, how you're gonna bring together your vocal melodies, is there a certain strategy you have, or just kind of walk us through your songwriting process a little bit. Well, the guys will get together and they'll like, you know, lay down all their riffs and drum lines and things like that, and when they form it as a song, they'll throw it to me. And then what I'll do is I'll listen to it like over and over and over. And it's, I know it sounds kind of hippie-ish, but it's almost like the song writes itself. Oh yeah. I'll just listen to it and I'll just feel it. And then like words come to me and it just, it writes itself pretty much. I know it's like, so weird. It's like, no, I'm <laughs> so zen. You know, I, I feel like maybe you're like separated at birth there. Like, just like, <laughs> Cause I really, it's the same It's so same weird. Style, I, can't, yeah. I can't like just sit and be like, okay, I got this song. This is what I'm gonna write about. I'm gonna write about this. It's like. I don't write like that. I just write what comes comes out. You let the emotion come Yes, to you. it's pure emotion. I'm so emo. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what it's like to be one of the most, I guess, identifiable black women in metal. Like uh, there was, there's been Skunk and Nancy. Yes, I love. I wish she's got an amazing voice. Yes, believe me, I'm a fan too. But how do how do you feel that that changes the hand? of the face of metal. You know what, it's it's a good thing for like women of color to see somebody else up there, you know, that, they, that they can relate to. You know what I'm saying? Like instead of seeing, you go you read the magazines, you see the same people in there all the time. It's just like nice to mix it up, you know? No, for sure. How do you, have you ever had a situation where somebody's been racist or biased towards you? Or like outwardly just callous yes. with the way that they act towards you because of your color and because of who you are? Yes. Um, we did a tour with Devil Driver and we played Detroit. We actually played like Barclays. And um, I wasn't feeling good that day. It was just a crappy day. And uh, we were performing and there was a guy, uh, I guess he was like a, I don't know, a skinhead or something like that. He was doing the whole like, I'll get there or whatever. And give me the middle finger like, and call me the again. N-word. He called me the N-word and everything. And it was like, oh my God. Like totally like freaked out. Um, we played, needless to say, we played the show and ran out, and then I heard that Des got on stage and he was like livid because he heard about it. And he was just like, I heard that she ran out crying, he's like, I don't know if that shit could ever happen again. And he told the crowd, he was just like, if you believe in that shit, you need to get out right now. Like, that's me. He totally stood up for me. And he's so a awesome. sweetheart, yeah. He's amazing. I love that. I love you, Des. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's like, I'm pretty much married to my guys. You know the guys in my band. That's what it is. Music's your hub. Th that's what it is. Yeah. That's. I don't really have time for the other stuff. You know, like it'd be nice. You know, fall in love. And, you know, have somebody. But right now, I'm just like I'm enjoying my life. Right now. Yeah. Always good to chat it up with another female musician. If you want to learn a little bit more about Alexis and Straight Line Stitch, you can check out their Facebook page. Also, be sure to pick up their latest release, The Fight of Our Lives on E1 Records. You can find it on iTunes or anywhere in the crazy, suspicious internet. You've been watching Box Talk. I'm your host, Cena. And if you want to get a little more information, well, you can find me on Twitter, at Cena Coda, or you can check out our video or YouTube page, because Box Talk is taking over, baby.